And I think that, you know, when I, I read the Gospels and, and I hear about Jesus, Jesus, whenever he talked about the Holy Spirit, he kind of sounded like a hype man, right? Jesus like, guys, when the Holy Spirit comes, it's going to be amazing, right? <laughs> When the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to teach you all things. The Holy Spirit is going to bring all things to your remembrance. He's going to help you with whatever you need. When you're weak, he's going to be your strength. He's going to bring freedom into every area of your life because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. He's going to clothe you with power from on high. I know you want to go tell everybody about what I did, but just wait because when this power comes, it's going to be amazing, right? Like, he was constantly hyping up the Holy Spirit, so much so that, that you kind of tempted to think that he's kind of overselling this Holy Spirit guy, right? That he's, he's exaggerating on his importance, that he is embellishing on what he can actually accomplish. And I think the disciples were starting to doubt the things that Jesus was saying about the Holy Spirit because Jesus makes a statement in John 16 about the Holy Spirit that is so profound he had to preface this statement by saying no cap here it is john 16 7 jesus said i tell you the truth no cap it is better for you that i go away if i do not go the helper the holy spirit will not come to you if i go i will send him to you jesus told his disciples that it was better for him to go away so that he could send the holy spirit now, if I was one of Jesus' disciples and he said that to me, I'd be like, that's cap. You lying. <laughs> like, what can be better than having Jesus with you in person, right? I mean, when you got Jesus with you, you got free health care, right? Come on, somebody. Whenever you get sick, bam, healing. No copays, right? Like, no, no, just healing for free, right? Free health care, right? If Chick-fil-A shorts you on your nuggets, don't worry. Jesus got your back. He'll multiply your nuggets and your Chick-fil-A sauce when they forget them, right? Like one time, dude, they were at this party, and, and they ran out of wine, and Jesus was like, hand me that smart water. I got this. And he turned smart water into wine. Like, like what can be better than having Jesus with you in person? I mean, it'd be one thing if Jesus said, hey, guys, I'm going to go away, but it's going to be okay because I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to you. Like, that would be believable. But that's not what he said. He said, it's better for you that I go away. I've been watching the uh, TV series Chosen about the life of Jesus and the disciples. And if you haven't watched it, it is the best portrayal of Jesus that I've ever seen. The show is amazing. No cap. Like, not Justin Fryer. Don't say, yeah, you're, you're, you're discrediting what I say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like, like, it is phenomenal, right? Everybody I've recommended the show, they're like, dude, I can't stop watching it, right? It's just, it, this show is amazing. If you haven't got on it yet, you need to get on and start watching that thing. But, you know, I'm watching this show, and all I can think about is how incredible it would have been to be a disciple, to, to walk with Jesus, to talk with Jesus, to see the miracles that he performed, to, to hear him teach. Like, I feel like I would be a better Christian if I was just there with Jesus as a disciple. But Jesus said that what we now have in the Holy Spirit is better than that. That according to Jesus, having the Holy Spirit in you is better than having Jesus with you. According to Jesus, having the Holy Spirit in you is better than having Jesus with you. And here's why. In John 14, 16, Jesus said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Let me nerd out on you for a moment. There are two Greek words that Jesus could have used here for another. The first one is allos, which means another of the same kind. And the second word here is heteros, which means another of a different kind. So if Jesus would have used the word heteros, he was saying, look, I'm going to send a helper, but he's going to be a completely different kind of helper, that you're not going to be familiar with him or know him because he's going to be different from Jesus. But that's not the word that Jesus used here. He used the word allos, which is another of the exact same kind. So Jesus said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And when he comes, he's going to be exactly like me. That when you have the Holy Spirit, it's going to be just like you have me. That when you have him, you're going to feel like you have me because we are exactly the same. The Holy Spirit is identical to Jesus in every way. He's just like Jesus in the way that he thinks. He's just like Jesus in the way that he speaks, in the way that he acts, in the way that he moves, in the way that he operates. He is identical to Jesus in every way except one. Unlike Jesus, the Holy Spirit can actually come and live inside of you and empower you to live like Jesus. 
See, Jesus could tell you what to do, but he couldn't give you the power to do it. That's why Jesus said, it's better for you that I go away because when I go, the Holy Spirit is actually going to come inside of you and he's going to empower you to do everything that I have commanded. Romans 8, 11 says this. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. So the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is inside of us, empowering us to live for Jesus. The gospel is not that God forgives your sins so that you can now try really hard to live for God. The gospel is that God forgives your sins so that his spirit can come and live inside of you and empower you to live for Jesus. Right? God does not cleanse your sins so that you can go and be with God one day. He cleanses your sins so that he can come and live inside of you right now. So that he can empower you to live for Jesus. So that he can give life to your mortal body. And there are a lot of people think that this verse is talking about heaven. It's not talking about heaven. Because it says mortal body. In heaven, you don't have a mortal body. You have an immortal, glorified body. He wants to give life to your mortal body right now. And that Greek word life is the Greek word zoe, which means the God kind of life. Uh, uh, imagine that you want to be like the greatest basketball player of all time, Michael Jordan. If you thought I was going to say LeBron James, you need to repent and you need to get right with God. All right? <laughs> Like, you, that, that just shows you you're not with God where you need to be, okay? Because if you, when I say, when I say the greatest of all time, if any other name came to your head other than MJ, you're not right, all right? You need to get right or find another church because you are not welcome in this place, all right? This is a no-cap church. We're not, we're not having that LeBron James stuff. Don't even bring that to me. Don't come at with me. That, that, that argument is too weak, all right? It's MJ or get out, right? That's it, all right? <laughs> But let's say you want to be like the greatest basketball player of all time, Michael Jordan, but you lack the, the skill, the coordination, and the talent, right? Let's just say that you actually have the size and athleticism, but you are lacking in every other way. But you really want to be like Mike. So you just say, you know, I'm just going to imitate Mike. And you go get the same shoes that he wore. You wear the number 23 like Michael Jordan. You drink Gatorade like Michael Jordan. You stick your tongue out when you jump through the air like Mike, right? You even sing the song like Mike, if I could be like Mike. But it don't help. You still can't play like Mike. And so you decide that you're going to study game film, right? And so you watch every single game that he played. You're taking meticulous notes, right, to see how he responded in every situation, learning, studying his moves. And so you have notebook after notebook filled with tips and pointers and, 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 and principles to try and play like Mike but you are nothing like Mike. You are still absolutely terrible. So you sign up for a Michael Jordan training camp for the summer where Michael Jordan himself teaches you how to play basketball like the way that he played the game. And so, and so for three months, you are in this training program with Mike, learning directly from Michael Jordan himself. And at the end of the summer, you're a little bit better, but you're still nothing like Mike. But Michael Jordan decides he's gonna personally mentor you for three years. And so for three years, you spend every waking moment of your life with Michael Jordan, learning, studying, training to be just like him. And at the end of that three years, you are a, a better basketball player. There, there's no doubt about it, but you are still nowhere even close to being like Michael Jordan. And so you realize that no matter what you do, no matter how hard you try, you are never going to be like Mike. That's your only hope of being like Michael Jordan is if Michael Jordan himself could step inside of you and play basketball through you, right? That is the only hope you have of being like Mike. Do you realize that's exactly what the Holy Spirit does? The Holy Spirit, come on somebody, this is good preaching right here. The Holy Spirit, you didn't think we could work this all in there. I'm telling you, you, some of you were already talking with me. The Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you, giving you the God kind of life so that you could live like Jesus. So that what was previously impossible on your own is now possible because his spirit lives within you.